Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. And you know what? I'm going back in the day. How many of us say that all the time? Well, I am so happy to have a very special guest today, Cheryl Day from Back in the Day Bakery. And Cheryl, I have to admit, when I knew to come to you in Savannah, mm -hmm. I was more interested in the fact that the name of your bakery was Back in the Day than if anything. If I had a dollar for every time I heard somebody say that, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm such a fan, and uh, well, I, I have so been for many years. Well, you know, I am kind of have not been noted along the way as the case lady yeah and honestly your back in the day bakery cookbook just about made me cry because it is so real it's just you know as a baker I know that these recipes they are so do. authentic they work and too. then ma but made with love back in the day so y'all this is a New York Times bestseller if you do not have it you yes, must it get is. it this is just so many old school recipes mm -hmm. in here. You will just really be going back in the day. She and Griff, your husband, are both uh, semi-finalists for Best Baker with the James Beard Award. Wow! Just yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, that kind of wowed us. I, I know it did. <laughs> well, today, you, we are making things, when you think about this time of year, bake sales, all kinds of things. What are we gonna be making today? We're making our famous pumpkin crunch bars. And it's such a simple recipe. You know, so many people here are scared of making pies and pie crusts. So this is my one bowl method. It's awesome. Of course, you could a melting butter here, kind of in a double boiler situation, or kind of our makeshift. This is exactly how I do it at the bakery. Well, and I want to also introduce that we're making this, and we're also making the smorgasbord, smorgasbord cookie. cookie. That's right. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna just give you a, one of my recipes today. Oh, I'm gonna I love it. surprise you at the end with, well, that's with a one of mine. So you've got the butter melted there. I've got the butter melted here, and then I like to do this, like I said, all in one bowl because less mess. Oh, right. Because otherwise you'd be washing that double boiler. Exactly. So we just throw everything in here. I've got salt, sugar, vanilla, some good vanilla. And you then always you wanted me to line this pan with parchment. Yes, ma'am. If okay. you could line that with parchment. All so right. this is just all melted. So we've got that going. Ooh. And that's it. Oh, for man, that now part, we're going to put the flour in. Yeah, this is the part that sometimes gets people a little surprised because they see it's melty butter, but I promise it's going to all come into a crust. So we're just going to add in our flour. And, you know... It's like a shortbread crust almost. And that, that's, that is exactly what I was getting mm -hmm. ready to say. This is that is what makes this so authentic to me is that there's nothing like shortbread. Oh, I don't think so either. Ugh. And there's nothing like easy peasy one bowl. So you see, it's got melted butter. Well, and you know and all these newfangled things that you're, that, you know, you think yeah. you're going to melt the butter in the microwave. She melted it in the pan exactly. that she's going to be doing it I in. I don't like to do extra <laughs> dishes. When Griff and I first opened, we were the head dishwashers along with everything else. So I try to think of ways not to do. Okay, well I hope I've got this in here right. I'll kind of Oh, you've got hold, it in there right, hold on for to sure. It. And here's a spatula right, so for you. So I, I think clean hands are your best tool, so I am going to finish with that, but don't be afraid. It is soft when you're first getting it in, but that is really oh, going to make a perfect crust. So I just kind of start dolloping it in. Okay. And then Vera, if you would, we just want to kind of flatten it into the pan. Yeah. Want to use this one? Yeah. Okay, I'll swap it. You. you can use okay, that. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, we. I'm going to keep working on this because I want to get it just right. Oh, just flatten to the pan. And uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to get started on the delicious pumpkin filling that goes in this. This is going to melt in your mouth. Something everybody's going to want to do. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Welcome back, everybody. We are back in the day with Cheryl Day from 
back in the day bakery That's in Savannah. I know it, back in the day. <laughs> well, you know, and I say that all the time, and now I'm living it because I just never thought that I would get you on my show. Oh, gosh. So I'm so excited about it. And um, we, if you're just joining us, we did this little shortbread crust mm -hmm. for these pumpkin bars. And um, look how golden it just turned out great. And you were kind enough to do the filling for I us, know which it. is so easy so to do. So let's talk through the filling that we made ahead. Okay. All right, so you just creamed the cream cheese, and then we let that get nice and soft. Right. And then we added the pumpkin puree. We had some melted butter, vanilla extract, confectioner sugar, lots of great spices. You've got mace, cinnamon, and nutmeg. And then lastly, we added the eggs. And that's, that's right. What you and have it's there. just nice and creamy. Yeah, it's like pumpkin so, pie, but with great filling. So I'm going to pour great this seasons. over this just wonderful crust. Mm -hmm. If I can do it without dropping this bowl. <laughs> <laughs> you got oh, it. And man. then just kind of smooth that in there. And really, I mean, that's it's good. almost like so cheesecake. Easy. It then, is very it? similar. It's like a little Gosh, all those cross spices. between cheesecake and pumpkin pie. All right, and then this is going to go in a 350 degree oven for That's about right. 50 minutes to an hour. Yes. So it really does bake almost like a, a cheesecake. Very similar. You just kind of want it to just lightly jiggle. You don't want to over bake it. And these are the kinds of desserts texture. that you always have in the bakery. Always, oh. especially this time of year. I've even had people ask for them in the summer. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to set this aside because now we're going to get started on those smorgasbord Yeah, but I cookies. love it that you got these nuts. So we're going to put those. Well, and these, are, I, I, I could actually just start eating these. These are bourbon pecans oh from the fresh market, and I thought I was going to ask your permission if when those got oh, through those that we could garnish those With the whipped on cream, top. I think those would be perfect. Okay, well, we'll have those if I don't eat them first. So cookies, one of my favorite things to do. I think it's most important to tell everybody, though, creaming butter, I mean, does anybody, half the people I know don't even know what they're doing when it says creaming butter on the recipe, <laughs> but except for that it says to do it, so they get started doing it. All right, let me lock this down. So basically, we'll get that light and creamy. And what? don't you love the glass? Oh, I love the glass so you can see it. But the most important thing, Vera, that people don't think about is we want to get this light and fluffy. Okay. You're basically whipping air into the ingredients. When it goes into the oven, then you force those air bubbles, and then that's when you get that great texture that you want for your cookies. And cookies she should and know because she's a James Beard semifinalist <laughs> as a baker. So and I do yes, love, as I I love like my as... job. All right, uh. so we'll get that really light. You can't do any harm here because you haven't added any flour That's at this right. point. So we'll just start to add in our spices. And this is a cool Oh, little that's perfect. For the We've molasses. Got vanilla. We've okay, got now why is this recipe called smorgasbord? Oh, smorgasbord. Well, my husband Griff is, uh, he's from right, Minnesota. Just, get that in for you. He's from Minnesota, and there's a lot of these places where you can do these smorgasbords because he's got a, he comes from a Norwegian background, oh. and it has everything, everything but the kitchen the sink, sink in there. I got it well, and I got it all over the counter, so forgive me. All right, and next and we we're going to add our eggs. And that's just one egg. And then that's where, the first and this step. is where these Kitchen Aids come in so Oh, handy. I love it. Um, I don't know about you, but I had to save and save and save to get my first Kitchen Aid. Me too. But you know, you can go do other things. And so, speaking of other things, when we come back from the break, that's when we start adding in everything but the kitchen sink. That's right. right. <laughs> and then I'm going to be given a secret from one of my favorite now cookies, Now that I'm too. excited about. So I'm excited to I share that. I love me that. a new recipe card. All righty. So come back with us after the break, and I'll see if I can get the rest of this <laughs> off my apron. <laughs> Vera's Corner is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. Don't you love cupcakes with swirled icing? Well, join me in my test kitchen. I'm going to show you how to make swirled icing for your favorite cupcake. Start with a large piece of plastic wrap. 
dollop one color of icing in one thick line and then smooth this out with a spatula. Do the same with the second color of icing and smooth that out as well. Roll the color closest to you over the second color and then twist the ends of the wrap. Place the icing carefully into a piping bag and then guide the plastic wrap through the piping tip. Snip the end of the plastic wrap and then chill it for about 15 to 20 minutes. Push the icing into the lower part of the piping bag. Ice your favorite cupcake and enjoy. Welcome back, everybody. And you know, you said we were doing smorgasbord cookies. That's right. And now you put all the ingredients out here, and I'm, I'm telling now you, you know why. It, the, everything imaginable. So you've yes. got your batter all done. I and do. And so now we're going to start to add in our dry ingredients. I've got my flour here. I always like just a little tip. I like to mix in my leavening yes. so it's you don't get like a bite of well we'll try to keep that all in the bowl too it must be something about that spot cheryl i did the same thing <laughs> so we're going to add in the flour and that's just plain flour it's just ap and flour yes ma'am and then it's got baking soda baking soda mm -hmm. So we'll get that mixed in before we start adding in everything but the kitchen everything. sink. <laughs> Literally. So we've got chocolate chips. Let's start with those. We'll and these cookies are a nice big size too, right? They are big size. Uh-oh, this bowl is going to want to, it's going to revolt because there's so much stuff going in. So much stuff going, going in. in. So just lock that on the right hand hold side. Hold it down. Ta-da. Yeah. And then we've got butterscotch chips. Still doesn't want to. It's just too much. There we go. There we are. You can always mix it by hand too. But I love to just add in walnuts. And can can you substitute other nuts? Oh, I mean, you can, can you do put whatever you can put whatever you like. <laughs> Obviously. You just mix it up. And so then I like to do my pretzels. So for those sweet and salty lovers out there, it's perfect. This for is that. the oh my gosh, potato, and potato chips. chips. And I just won't let that mix too long. Oh, I think our That's website it. might blow up with people wanting this <laughs> recipe. And that reminds me, well, we're gonna give it to them. we are, and all the recipes are always available on our website at veryvera.com, and of course on Cheryl's cookbooks as well. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to have those for sale on our website too, Cheryl. Oh, I'm so it's, I know it. We're big time now. I got it. Wow. All right, so that's what we're working with here. That's our cookie dough. I'll just, I always like to give it just like a final stir. These just. mixers are fantastic, but nothing like using your hand. So I'm gonna pass it off to you because okay, I'm learning and about you're those gonna use, You're gonna do an ice cream scoop yes. as your measurement. Okay, it well. a perfect amount. I mean, obviously way. I had to get up pretty early in the morning to come up with a back in the day cookie. And we were laughing about the fact that my a lot of my grandmother's cookies recipes would say Oleo. And I mean, like my interns don't even know what Oleo is <laughs> cause it's so old fashioned, but that's margarine that's you guys. And so um, the dough for these, these are a lemon cream cheese log cookie. Okay. So I creamed the, mar I did, I'm doing margarine just mm -hmm. like grandmother said, but you can, you can substitute butter. So mm -hmm. it's creaming the margarine, the sugar. Um, and then I added cream cheese to that. Mm -hmm. And a little and one egg yolk. Okay. So that was the mixture. Then I added in um, flour. Uh, I did a little bit of salt, um, lemon zest, and my pecans, my chopped up pecans. Oh, that sounds so I've let the um, cookie dough cool, and you say that you actually I like to sometimes do that let too. this cool too. But you're going to pinch off a ball, Cheryl. That you know, just a little bit larger than a marble. Mm -hmm. And we're just making logs okay. on this. And so I love, and, and I honestly, I, can't, I can certainly know that there are gonna be plenty of moms and grandmothers who are gonna wanna do that with their young person. But these are fun too, because you can teach them about trying to get 
everything a consistent oh, size. Oh, I love that. Teach them know? that and then send them to me at the bakery once they learn. <laughs> once they've done that. So I'm just going to, you know, just pinch off the little little bit. And, you know, if all the pecans are not exactly even. And then lastly on this, you want to take just water and a fork and you're going to just slide through. Oh, I love that. And then these are going to go into a 325 degree oven till they're nice and golden brown. And then I've got another secret I'm going to share with you when we come back from the break. So y'all come back because we're just baking up a storm. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to show you some presentation ideas that will take you back in, back the day. in the day. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Cheryl, we have been so busy. This has been so fun. I, I, woo, you know, <laughs> and it's just, yeah. this is my passion, and I'm just so happy to have somebody with me today oh, that is I obviously is passionate here. about it. So while we were away, you showed us how to um, press the dough down. Right, for the cookies. I just gave them a little slight tap. Then that way they'll spread this nice, beautiful oh. size. Oh my gosh. And and then I took the lemon cheese log and after they were cooled and I just melted a little bit of semi-sweet chocolate and, boy, are they good. and just dipped the, the end of it. So you just got a nice bite with, you can either choose to go first with the chocolate <laughs> or last with that. But let's get started with what we did first today, which were the um, pumpkin crunch the bars. Pumpkin crunch and Vera, I just love this idea to cut. This is how we serve it at the bakery. You get this huge size with a big dollop of whipped cream. I love the idea with these. Perfect size to share. Mm -hmm. Perfect size to share, but I love the idea that you cut those in quarters because really it. that's plenty. Well, and that's what I love. That's perfect in these terms awesome. of, you know, educating people when they come in that most mm -hmm. people will cut those True. into fourths. And then the garnish is, of course, the, the bourbon pecans, but it could be almonds, it could mm -hmm. be anything. Just, it's a beautiful garnish. And today, um, Cheryl, I'm using my my grandmother's milk glass collection wow. for the way to display everything. It. And then the little candy um, compote dish for the lemon cheese logs mm -hmm. with the chocolate kind of sticking up straight. And so I was trying to think, you know, what could I do special for you? And since I pulled it, I've been looking for a reason to use this milk glass on TV. So I thought, what about a piece of milk glass that we could give to you oh, wow. with the recipe for the cookie and you know for those that don't know you've been to our website you. Um, and you the recipes will be there but when you hit print on your printer mm -hmm. it comes out looking like an old-fashioned recipe card which I, I absolutely love, love but I hope you will enjoy oh, using that I'm recipe. I'm going to cherish this I know it and the jar. little jar that goes with it. You know it. I love my vintage. And then you know if you don't have time the other reason I love Fresh Market so much and they've been such a great partner to me is that you can go in and pick up a candle mm -hmm. kitchen towels when you need like a hostess gift oh, yeah. you know right there while you're in the grocery that's store great. and that smells as good as everything else that we've got oh, here today. I love it. But just kind of as an idea of what you might see when you make your next trip to Savannah to Back in the Day Bakery, have you ever seen such a cinnamon bun in your life? They're as big as your head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I got a pretty big head, Cheryl. Those are amazing. So it's that kind of thing just displayed and just in her counter. And, you know, again, Back in the Day Bakery and then Back in the Day Made with Love. And she and Griff have been married for 13 12 or 13, 12 years. 12 years, and they're just bringing that love to the bakery every single, every day. single day. Griff is really great with bakery, with the mm -hmm. breads, and that sort of thing. So, we have these available on our website That's at verybira.com awesome. for you guys to enjoy and, and use. And then, you know, when you're putting together something like this as a display, you know, think about those vintage pieces. Mm. You know, a rotary um, mixer that's probably in the bottom of your drawer at home mm -hmm. that you don't even use anymore looks great as a prop sure. on something like this. Um, but I want to, I want you to try one of these. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> and then I am going to take just kind of a corner of this mm -hmm. cookie. And you know, bakery goods, if they're so made right. Delicious. Mm, oh. That's delicious. 
every single bite is going to have a different part of the kitchen mm. sink in there, <laughs> right? Because remember, potato chips, pretzels, mm. everything else. So great bakery items That's really delicious. do freeze well, and this is great to get a head start on holiday. Mm -hmm. These recipes will freeze beautifully. So remember, I say, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I've got great <laughs> taste in friends and baker buddies. Come back and join us again next week for another episode of The Very Beer Show. And you come back to join <laughs> oh, me. Oh, I will. Thanks for having okay. me. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.